Good morning, everyone. Oh, I'm here at the. Oh, this collar never is bright. Okay, I'm here at the laundromat. Boy, is it humid this morning. Now, I love the heat, but humidity, I don't do too good in. Thank the Lord, I'm not having too much of a problem this morning. Um, the humidity really flares up the arthritis, but I'll get through it. There is a breeze, so thankful for that. I was going to take you for a walk through this parking lot like I've done before, but because of the wind, I decided just to come here in the car. Um, everything is in the washer. I think I have 15 minutes that I can talk with you. Did you see my video I did the other morning of um, right after I let all those chickens out? <laughs> I mean, that's how it is in the morning. And it's even worse than that. They are ready to get out of there. And they're running after each other. And... They just can't wait for that food to get down and um, I have to watch out, you know, where I step. That I, I mean, that I don't step on any of them because they are so, so wild in the morning. But they are fun to watch and I have a routine so that makes it easier. I um, get all my fresh water containers filled up and I get them put out and put down before I open up the coop. So that's good and um while they're out running around i'm usually in the coop in that um galvanized bucket that i had gotten with their food and i'll get their food and ah oh. now i i um got that little pool and put water in it and i put some grass in it from my gosling and it just loves it and i know that some people said it needed more water for it to swim but I'm just letting it get used to that. And actually, it was swimming yesterday in the water. Um, you know, when it sits down, it's really in the water. So, but I will add, I'll be adding more water to it. Of course, I empty it out at night and I rinse it out. But uh, it is enjoying that. And I tried to get a picture of one of my barred rocks was in that water too. But as soon as I got close, you know, with the camera, my bod rock got out of the water. Um, they are fun. <clears throat> and I went down the garland. I don't know if I told you this. I don't think I did. I was telling Jamie from Jamie's Hooked. Um, Thursday morning, I went down the garland to Roach's feed store. You know, I'm always bragging about them. I knew they were getting baby peeps in. So I went down there and I talked to the lady that I know. She told me that they, they had just left there to go to the post office to get them. So I asked her, do you know what breeds you're getting? And she didn't know, but she pointed me in the direction of the wall, of a wall, where there's a list of the dates that they're getting them in and what breeds. And she said, you're welcome to go over there and take a picture. So I went over there and I took a picture of it and I told her I'll come next Thursday because next Thursday they're getting baby leghorns in. So I used to have a leghorn when I first started raising chickens. Beautiful white one that I named Lucy. And um, I'd like to get a couple leghorns. Of course, there you have to buy four, but we'll see. We'll see even if I buy any. But I'm going to go down there. Well, you know what she told me? She said that it has become so hectic there on the days that they get those baby chicks in. And that's where I got my goslings, if you remember. And I've gotten baby chicks from them before. Um, she said that people, you know, were rushing in there and they're leaning over in those galvanized tubs to pick out what they want. And they're bumping into each other. And um, she said they had to come up with a different way of doing things because they're afraid that someone's going to get hurt, someone's going to get angry, but most of all that little peeps, you know, will fall out of someone's hand. They're so fragile. They get them a day old and they're just so tiny and so fragile. So she told me what they do now is they have a, an iPad, I guess, up at the desk and you sign in 
and then they'll call your name and you're only allowed to buy six which is good because she said people were buying 20 20 and 30 and people were waiting in line and by the time they got up there they you know there was no peeps and so I understand you know I'm glad that they figured out a better way to do it and so th she knows that I come all the way from Wiley it's about 12 13 miles not too bad but um, we have a big feed store here in Wiley where I could go buy my feed and of course we have tractor supply um, but I have been going down to roaches since I started raising chickens. I did go a few times over to the bigger feed store we have in Wiley. And they're very nice there. And, um, and in a pinch, I have bought some feed in the past at Tractor Supply. Um, but I do like going down to roaches. There's just something about that old country feed store. Um, I think those creaky floors is what draws me down there. Besides the people that run it are very, very nice. And of course I've gotten to know them. Um, this is five years now I've been going down there. So she told me, she said, you know what I'll do for you? She said, you call down here Thursday around 9.30 and ask for me. Um, and then she said, when, I, when she gets on the phone, she will, uh, tell me about what time the baby peeps are to be in and will I be going and if I decide to go down there she will put my name down so I'll probably be like second or third person on that list that saves me a trip from <clears throat> driving down there just to put my name on the list so I thanked her and um, I'm gonna do that at least go down and look and we'll see um, what other breeds they have, but I really do want a leghorn or two leghorns. And, um, you know, when I got my silkies, there was no place here in Wiley, uh, Rockwell or Rowlett or Garland that sold silkies. I had to go all the way out to Royce City, which is very, very country. We have a family from church that lives out there. And, um, I told her, I don't know why they call your city Royce City. It should be Royce Country. It is so country. But they were the only ones back then that sold silkies. Ah, uh, so we'll see. And let me tell you um, about some changes. So, if you've been following, you know how I was very, very sick. Um, the first time and ended up at the ER and then they said that it was a stomach virus because all my blood work had come back okay. They didn't do an ultrasound that day and they did um, have me give urine but I always questioned the results because um, I don't want to be too graphic but I mean this is medical you know. Um, that day when I was at the ER and I gave my urine, it wasn't normal. I know what to look for. Um, I mean, not under a microscope, I don't, but just <clears throat> regular urine because I was a nurse's aide. So I had to change um, catheters and check the um, output and all that, look for discoloration and, you know, all that fun stuff. So I am aware of what a normal urine looks and smells like compared to an abnormal and mine was very abnormal and so that day they um, wait a minute keys 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 I gotta put this window up Maybe that. Okay. the lady there's a parking space next to me that's empty and then the next one has a car in it with a lady in it that is smoking like a chimney and that smoke was coming over here and I'm so allergic to it I, I will get into a coffin fit and lose my voice anyway when I was at the emergency room and and gave that urine sample you know um, I had to get up to go to the bathroom anyway so it was convenient to give that sample and then in that bathroom they have a little <clears throat> metal door where you leave your cup and then 
someone comes from the other side of the door and gets it and I guess hopefully takes it down to the lab. Well, when I opened that door, there were two cups in there um, with no, you know, sticker on the top. I didn't touch the containers, but I know that they were putting stickers on the top with your name and patient ID and all that. And so um, I went out of there and I went to the desk and I told the nurse, I said, I don't feel comfortable leaving my sample in there. There's two samples there and they're not marked. And anyway, she assured me that it would be okay, but I, I don't believe that my urine even got checked that day. Anyway, um, then, you know, a couple weeks after that, I got sick again, and two days after being sick, when I had enough strength, I got to my doctor down in Plano and saw the physician's assistant, and like I say, if you've been following me, you know that she ran just about every kind of test which was just wonderful, and ordered an ultrasound. And then you know that the gallbladder showed full of stones, which it's been for a few years, and that the uh, liver has got fat, and it's just a little bit swollen, so they diagnosed it as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD. Well, I've made some changes. I mean, I wasn't eating junk food anyway. Excuse me, but um, what I've done is I was I was never really feeling good when I would take those three diabetes pills, and I wasn't really seeing them make much of a difference. But I just never felt good, and I had stopped them at one time, and then I went back on them. Well, after all of this, um, I got to um, researching things and excuse me allergies I got to researching things and um, praying about things and I just felt like it would be better for me now I'm just talking about me everyone has to you know work out their own things but um I felt like for me it'd be wise and better to just stop taking those three diabetes pills. And so, of course, when I was sick this last time, I wasn't taking any medicine because nothing would stay down. So I've not taken it um, since then. And let me tell you what a difference. My blood sugar numbers um, have been in the hundreds which, you know, for me, that's fine. For somebody else, it wouldn't be, you know. Um, but my numbers before were running 200, 300, sometimes 400. My numbers have been as high as 600 before. Not recently, but in the past. Um, now, this morning, my blood sugar was in the high 200s, but I know why. I ate... A late supper last night and so that makes a difference and so I've also been um, trying to eat my suppers earlier now that's going to be a challenge um, on the nights that I have church because I'm so used to just getting out of church and coming home and eating my supper which is not good because if I get out of church you know um, 8.30, 9 o'clock, even sometimes 9.30, and then come home and eat, you know, that's not good for my body, and so I'm going to make that change, and I'll see what I do um, on the nights that I have church, which is Thursday night and Sunday night, but mostly Thursday night, I'll probably just have a really big lunch, and then I'll figure out something on um on Sundays anyway I'm working it all out and it's making a difference <clears throat> I'm also not as uh, sluggish and has fatigued as I was and so ironically before I got sick this last time oh about a week before I was talking with the guy at church who is a respiratory therapist he works with kids I think in one of the Baylors, or he was in a Baylor, 
Maybe they moved him to a different hospital. I don't know. But I asked him um, if he had seen an increase in people coming in with um, respiratory issues because of the season that we're in. And a lot of people are plowing fields and planting and there's a lot of pollen in the air and things like that. And anyway, we were talking, talked for quite a while. And I was telling him how in the past I had taken myself off the diabetes pills and I was considering doing it again because I know that everything that we swallow, uh, you know, goes through our liver. Now this was before I knew that I had the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, but I specifically told him, I said, when I'm taking that diabetes medicine, my stomach just does not feel right, and um, I don't think my kidneys feel right, and, and even my liver, I don't think, feels right. And then, about a week later, is when I got sick again and went for that ultrasound and found out. So I really believe, you can call me crazy, I don't, it don't bother me, but I believe that even then when I was talking with that guy from church and I was considering things and thinking about things, I think that um, I really feel like God was impressing upon me how my body was reacting to that medicine. My, my system is made up that I just can't handle medicine. I've told you before, I can't handle pain medicine and um, and there's been some medicine they tried to give me before when I had a major flare-up of the diverticulitis and I couldn't handle that medicine. And it is, well, first of all, it's just the way that God's created my system for whatever reason. And then second of all, my mother's side of the family, a lot of people on that side are the same way when it comes to medicine. Really big intolerance. And so anyway, I think that um, when I was feeling how I was and talking with that guy from church, I felt like God was just making me aware of how my body feels when I take that diabetes medicine, you know, and um, anyway, it made me to consider things and research things and pray a lot about it, and I just tell you, I feel so much better since I'm not on it. Of course, the endocrinologist isn't going to be happy, but you know, um, she's not living inside my body. She don't have to deal with the things that I have to. And I will let her know when I have my appointment, you know, what I've decided and what I've done. But I'm also keeping track of my blood sugar levels. Of course, they're in my meter, but I'm writing it all down. And when I go to my appointment, I take my meter and they put it through a machine and they read the numbers for the past three months. And I'm keeping a journal of what I'm eating and what time I eat. And it's such a big difference. I just can't, I can't explain it very well. And again, this is just me. I'm not giving any advice to anybody else. This is what's working for me. But I feel so much better. And I'm thankful that we can talk to God about anything. And I'm not against doctors, you know that, and I'm not against medicine. When I was taking that diabetes medicine, I'd pray over it. I'm telling you, I'd pray. I pray over everything. I say, God, uh, cause this medicine to work how it's intended. And so, I mean, we can trust the Lord for all things. He wants us to trust him. I've said that before. And uh, I feel like this has given my liver a break and helping it. And um, I already did drink a lot of water, but now I'm drinking a whole lot more water, which is making a big difference. And... I've never been a breakfast eater, even since a kid. Now, has a kid... Having a mother that was um, a nurse, she really pushed breakfast, especially back home in those winters when I'd have to go out and wait for the bus. She pushed um, oatmeal, she pushed maple, she pushed uh, toast with peanut butter and banana, <laughs> and I didn't have a choice but to, you know, eat. But uh, as a teenager and then out on my own, I've never really been a breakfast eater. And... What I was doing the past few months was I was actually forcing myself to eat something most mornings, either a hard-boiled egg or two hard-boiled eggs or scrambled egg or an avocado or an avocado and egg. 
Um, and I never really felt good. I know people say breakfast is the most important meal. Who knows if it is? Depends on your body. I didn't feel good having food in my stomach first thing in the morning. Um, and so now I've gone back to not forcing myself. If I am hungry and I feel like I do need some fuel, that's really what food is for, you know. Food is not, food is not to comfort us. It's not to make us feel full and bloated. Food is for fuel. That's what fuel, food is for. So, um, like I said, if there's a morning I wake up and after I'm done a few chores, if I feel like I need to have some fuel, I will go ahead and boil two eggs or maybe I'll scramble a couple eggs. But for the most part, I'm just been having black coffee, no more of the sugar-free creamer, just black coffee, or I'll have um, a nice cup of herbal tea. And some of my herbal teas, I'll mix two or sometimes three tea bags together. Um, and just that, I don't put nothing in it. I'm just telling you, I'm feeling so much better. And uh, I'm just so thankful that this is working for me. Now, if tomorrow I wake up and I'm sick as a dog, I'm still going to thank God that I felt better the days that I did. And I'm still going to thank him when I'm sick that he's God and he don't change. So, but I believe that this is going to work for me. And uh, I just wanted to share all that. I'm not too good at explaining it because... You know, I've just been doing this since I was sick and hadn't mentioned it. I've just been keeping track of numbers and things. And I can see such a difference. Such a difference. So, oh boy, 22 minutes. Where does the time go? See if I covered everything. I am crocheting and I'll be showing you some things. And someone put in a comment, it was Nana Kathleen that she'd like to see more of my vintage crochet magazines. And so I've got those out and I'll plan to be showing you those. So stay tuned, I gotta go get things in the dryer. I don't wanna hold up those washers. Have a good day, everyone.